and, and, and I think that that's where the discussion is turning in this town. People are wondering how this could have happened. How turning a discussion rifle a couple of hours into, into a mass and, murder. Pat and the investigation will uh, look into how he got possession of those weapons. Pat, before you go, I just... Uh, uh, maybe Pat left already there. Okay. Maybe she, yeah. uh, Pat, I'm I just, back. I'm you know, back, I, I, was, I'm back. I was struck by your I'm observation back. driving in, and you saw your media colleagues, but also the law enforcement. And can you imagine the law enforcement officers who were first in that room, first in the scene? I mean, a lot of Newtown, you know, Newtown police officers live in that community, obviously, and this is a small town. I, I'm just struck on so many levels here. I mean, parents, of course, but those law enforcement officers, I, I just. It does leave you speechless. Yeah, uh, well, uh, and, and it raises also the question, Pat, about what those children saw as they only were being stay escorted from the building to safety by police officers. You know, we heard so many times that the police officers were telling them to cover their eyes, not to look, to cover their eyes, that there was such carnage in that building. It is hard to believe that some of those children did not see the body as, of the gunman as they passed by and tried to get out of that school. I have not been down to the firehouse as of yet. I was listening, as you said, to most of the reports as I was taking that very long drive up here from New York and as the people that I've spoken to here who have been on the scene. And you've got to imagine that those kids are going to be just traumatized by what they have seen. And and if they didn't see it, surely by now they know what has happened, and they will know what has happened. And the days unfold, and the hours unfold here. And this is a very small town. Everybody knows everybody. And if you didn't lose a child, you know someone who did. And if you didn't, your child wasn't hurt, you know someone who did. And as you said, those police officers going into that building, and and the fire, the first responders, the firefighters, everyone who went into that building, no doubt knows people who were lost in this tragedy this morning. And uh, this entire town is. is is impacted by this and you can just see by the numbers of people who are here um, it's a lot of them live here and they, they've come here to, to try to find out information because it's not forthcoming uh, from that the, the scene there because as I said they are starting to rope that off and they're getting people shooting people further back as the governor makes his way over to the school to talk to those parents but again it, it, it's just absolutely unimaginable when, when 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 one child is lost in a community we see grief counseling and it takes many many days and weeks for, for kids to get over over this. My sister's a teacher in, in South Jersey, uh, David and Contessa, you know that. And last week, uh, two of her students, her former students, were killed um, in, a, in a gunfight in Pleasantville, New Jersey. And I remember she called me and she from her classroom and she was just so overwhelmed. It was a former student who had troubles but was nonetheless very well liked by, by the student body and, and by the teachers. And when she went to school the next morning, I remember I was fearful for her. I said, Deb, what if there's retaliation? I, I fear for you going into the school in an urban school district um, on a day after such a tragedy has struck and, and kids are angry and they're upset. And she said to me, if I don't go, who will be there for my kids? Who will be there for my kids if, if I'm not? And I realized at that moment that every day that teachers go to school and, and, and teach and they take our children into their into their arms and into classrooms, they could be facing this at any given moment. And it just struck me as I was driving up here that I had such fear for her. If she taught in a district like this, I would never have given a second thought about her safety coming to school on any given day. And I, I come from a long line of teachers, and, and I know what they sacrifice. And my mom was a teacher, and my and my aunt, a long line of educators. And, and what they face in the classroom every day is a challenge. But something like this, I, I can't begin to fathom what they're going to be dealing with in this in this in this town as they try try to come to grips with what's happened here. And, and Pat, the uh, teachers that we know talk about the potential threats in their classroom. They they know it, and um, the schools try to prepare for it as much as they can with plans for lockdown. And um, but bad things happen as we've seen today and and as we said 18 children now that's the number we're reporting of who were killed in this mass uh, massacre in this gunfire that exploded in their elementary school in Newtown Connecticut eight adults killed and this for some survivors it was a close call in fact here's a young boy who explained what happened to him what he experienced in school today he's talking to News Force Jonathan Bigliotti Tell me what happened, where you were when you heard all this happen. Well, I was coming, I was going back to my classroom, then I heard something like a person was kicking on a door, then I turned around, 
and I saw smoke, and I smelled smoke, then, then bullets whizzed by, then, then a teacher pulled me in to her room. Bullets whizzing by, did you, did you see where those bullets were coming from, did you see the shooter? Well, they were coming from the right and going to the left. And, and take it through, how many gunshots would you say you heard as you were in this hallway where, uh, walking I, with an assistant? Well, I think it was something like ten. About ten bullets. Uh, and your teacher pulled you into the classroom, got you to safety. What was it like? What, what were the students saying? What were the teachers saying? What was the scene there? Well, when I was out in the hall, when... Like, everybody heard the bullets. Yeah. They, like, went into a total panic. And how were you doing? What went on in your head as this was happening? Whoa. Simply put, they're eight years old, a very brave person, and you... And that was the interview from earlier today, just after Bear and his mom had been reunited at a fire station near that school. Um, and, and we want to be clear, the children that we spoke with are there with their parents, um, their parents guiding them and, and obviously uh, allowing them to speak with reporters. Contested the emotional scars of the innocence shattered, I can't even begin to, to contemplate for what parents will say now to their children uh, uh, to deal with this. Uh, again, evidence that it is a national tragedy. House, House Speaker John Boehner has ordered flags on Capitol Hill to be flown at half-staff now in honor of the victims. We understand that President Obama is scheduled to speak. At 3.15, Governor Malloy, who's there on the scene, is scheduled to hold a news conference at 3.30. We're also getting a statement from Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York on this uh, shooting at Sandy Hook. He says he was shocked and saddened to hear of the tragic shooting there this morning in Newtown. Thoughts and prayers are with the family and friends of the innocent victims, many of whom were young children, whose lives were claimed by this senseless and horrific act of violence. During times of such unthinkable tragedy, all New Yorkers stand together with the people of our neighboring state to grieve the loss of life and help bear the pain and anguish that will be felt by so many in the weeks, months, and years.